Hey everybody, I'm back. So uh, for today, we're going to be talking about the most important settings for the Go Excellent Mini. This is sort of like a part two of my review video, if you wish. Uh, and of course, for everybody that's new on here, my name is Marco from Mark Tech, and I review audio gears. So you guys that are buying this sort of things have an easier time deciding. If you like my content and would like to see more, feel free to subscribe, follow my other social media channels, and of course, if you have any sort of a question, please don't hesitate to ask. Before we begin with the actual settings, I would just like to say thank you to all of you that are watching, that are supporting me. It truly does mean a lot to me, guys, okay? More than you would ever really know. All right, let's, uh, let's take a peek under the hood. See what the good settings are. So, uh, first things first, guys. In my opinion, there are no best settings for the Go XLR, right? If anyone is setting it differently, just don't listen to them, okay? You know, uh, setting your EQ, compression, and uh, gate, it depends a lot on what mic you have. You know, if you have a dynamic and a condenser mic, and of course, a specific mic, uh, you know, on your own voice. And of course, how uh, good your room is treated. You know, the better room acoustics are, the less work you're going to have to put into the settings themselves. I uh, just think that is an important thing to mention before we begin here. Uh, let's start with a gate first, all right? What a gate actually does, it, it basically mutes your mic when you go uh, below a certain threshold level. In uh, my case, as you can see, this is 50 dB. Uh, what I do is I play around with different threshold values until I find one where the sound does not cut off even when I'm whispering or when I'm not right on top of the mic. So I can be a little bit away from the microphone, like instead of 5 to 10 inches, I can be like 15 to 20 inches off the mic and the microphone is not going to cut off, all right? What uh, attenuation does, it basically closes and opens up the gate. So 100% means that the gate is fully closed. So, you know, no sound is heard when you're not speaking into the mic. It's great, especially if you have a noise environment and uh, you don't want the mic picking up unwanted sounds like, you know, your AC, you know, or you typing on your keyboard, keyboard when you're not talking, that sort of stuff. So in my case, I just leave it at 100%. The tech and release here is how long it takes the gate to fully open and then uh, close back up again. You know, the quicker that action happens, uh, the quicker you, you're going to get rid of that unwanted noise. Uh, so I suggest you keep that as low as you can, you know, without actually cutting off your voice. I think that 20 milliseconds for the attack and then 250 for release is a good value to go with. The EQ section here is probably the hardest section to set up properly, you know, just because it depends so much on your own voice, what mic you have, your room, you know, basically the same things I was talking about earlier. I suggest you play around with different values uh, to see what suits your voice the best. Uh, what I do suggest uh, is you do not go above plus four or minus four just because I think uh, it changes the voice a little bit too much. And uh, yeah, too much EQ is uh, never good in my opinion, just because of that. Uh, let's take a look at the 900 to 160 hertz region. This is the bass region of the voice. If your voice is uh, natural lacking in this regard, uh, maybe you should up the value a little bit. You know, since my voice is pretty boomy, in general, uh, it's pretty deep. I usually lower the value a little bit, but that is just, you know, my specific case, case here. So for the 480 to 1.5 kilohertz region, that is the mid region, uh, that's basically where most of our voice resides, resides. If you sound a little nasally, hollow or muddy, play around with the values a little bit until you get something that sounds the best to you personally. And of course, the 4.5 to 7.8 kilohertz, that is the, uh, what I would call the high or treble region. If you're sounding a little bit sibilant, 
even if you have a pop filter i suggest you lower the 7.8 kilohertz region a little bit you know so that s and that p's do not cut through so much that is basically why i've uh, lowered it to minus two and uh, why i've lowered the 4.5 kilohertz is just because i think that on the default setting of zero it i sound a little bit harsh as far as my uh, voice is concerned so i've lowered it up to sort of uh, mellow it out a little bit what compression here does is sort of squeezes the lower and upper frequencies closer to each other so that everything sounds a little bit more even so it doesn't matter you know if you're screaming or speaking quietly you're going to be heard at around the same volume you know the bad thing about compression is it can impact dynamics and sort of make you sound like a robot <laughs> like you're always speaking at the same volume which is of course not natural but that only becomes a problem if you use too much compression what the threshold does is it tells you what level you know the compression should start working at in my case that is 25 db ratio is how much compression is applied to the sound the higher you go you know the more compressed the sound will be basically the more uh, the frequencies will be squeezed together in the upper and the higher like I was mentioning before 4 to 1 is I think a good value for voices and uh, is used by a lot of people uh, but you should still play around and see what sounds best to you I think the default value is uh, 2 to 1 if I remember correctly what attack and release does is basically the same thing as it does for the gate you know that's this is the same serves the same function and makeup gain makeup gain is important if you're wondering why i've set it up to 7 db it's uh, because you know the more you compress the sound the less vo volume you'll get out of your microphone uh, so in order to get that volume back to sort of like a good degree you have to use a few db of makeup gain to get it back you know how much depends on the threshold value and the ratio and yes as far as the settings go i think i've pretty much covered what's important here hopefully you've learned a thing or two today you know in my opinion this sort of settings eq gating compression these are not just settings that are important for the go xlr but for pretty much any audio device in general so you know knowing what they do and uh uh, knowing how to set up proper values is very very important and it's a fundamental thing you have to learn in audio all right guys this was all for today hopefully i'll see you next week